My name is Sara Assad. I am a PhD candidate in public health and primary care at the University of Cambridge. I study population aging and aim to understand how social well-being contributes to healthier lives towards older age. I was first introduced to this field of research while undertaking my master in public health at the American University of Beirut in my country, Lebanon. As a student, I was able to engage in research activities pertaining to aging and dementia in the Lebanese context, and soon after graduation, I worked as a project manager for the implementation of the first dementia cohort study in Lebanon. With time, I developed more interest in studying how population aging is challenging our healthcare systems, societies, and economies, and what possible solutions we can implement to alleviate its burden. I also wanted to explore population aging in different contexts and using longitudinal data, which are rare to find in developing settings, so that I can enhance my research skills and broaden my perspective. It is at this turning point that my search for a PhD opportunity outside of Lebanon started. For several months, I searched online for relevant groups and projects until I came across the website of the Cambridge City Over 75's Cohort Study, or CC75C for short. Little did I know that this study will be the focus of my PhD research. Still, I gathered some courage, emailed the project responsible, and was able to get an online interview with Dr. Jane Fleming, who is currently one of my supervisors, to discuss details about the available data and potential PhD project. Soon after, I submitted a PhD application and received guidance from the university on how to apply to scholarships I'm eligible for, among which was the joint funding by the Development Bank and Cambridge Trust. And as you have guessed, I succeeded in receiving the scholarship and moved to Cambridge in January 2018 to start my PhD life. From the very first month, I recognized that my journey in this place was going to be incredible. For one, meeting people from various countries, backgrounds, and disciplines made me quickly realize how much of an exotic and rich research hub Cambridge is. I was determined to make the best out of my time in this unique environment, so I tried to participate in various extracurricular activities at the level of the department, college, and university. What I enjoyed the most was my role as education and career officer at my college. I remember the rush of finishing my workday at the department and cycling all the way back to city center to moderate a graduate talk or help run a career evening. Needless to say, I learned a lot about teamwork, leadership and organization while making many friends. I also had an amazing time reconnecting with my favorite sport, playing table tennis with the university team, and even dared to try a new one, playing squash at the college courts. What made my time in Cambridge with all magical were these small moments dining in a candlelit formal, watching a friend dance in a ballet performance, or cheering another play in the Chinese orchestra. As for my research, I got to discover more about the health and social care system in the UK and how different it is compared to the Lebanese healthcare system, for example. And so I came to better appreciate the importance of interpreting population data within a particular context. Moreover, sharing my findings in local and international conferences is something I very much value for the feedback I receive on my work and the great opportunity to widen my research network. I will never forget my trip to Vienna, Austria, where I presented findings at the Aging and Social Change 2019 conference, nor my first video presentation at the Aging and Gerontology 2020 conference that was moderated from Tokyo, Japan. Despite having to work on this presentation from my college room, it very much kept me going in a time of COVID-related lockdown. 
On this note, I cannot but express my deep gratitude for having the continuous support of my family, friends, supervisors, but also college, university, and funders, without whom my journey wouldn't have been possible. As I start my fourth and last year of PhD in 2021, I hope that I continue to benefit from this great research hub, albeit online, and succeed in building my stepping stone towards an exciting career in population aging with international collaborators.